Good afternoon. So let's start our presentation. RabbitMQ lets OpenStack clusters supporting 14,000 hypervisors in one region. Let's start. And uh, my name is Yushiro Furukawa, working at Edway Corporation as a senior software engineer and manager. And I'm developing and operating the private cloud named Beluda. So and he's Masahito Muroi. He's also uh, working on LY Corporation and as a senior software engineer. And we are de um, developing and operating Flybit Cloud. So here is an agenda. So today, I will introduce that what is the better the Flybit Cloud. And again, um, next, um, revisit RPC, Oslo Messaging, and RabbitMQ. And introduction for Oslo Messaging HTTP driver, which is um, sort of implemented. And finally, retrospective after two years of operating the HTTP driver. So the Beluda is a like, name of the private cloud, which is managed by X XLine Corporation. And this is like we provide a VM, bare metal. So such kind of topics we can provide the, as a private cloud. And all of the um, XLine employees uh, uses this private cloud for developing and service releasing. Here is IL scale at Beluda. So you can see the old physical servers, a peak of user traffic, you can see it. And from the Beluda, we are managing um, bare metal server. So 40, 46,000 bare metal servers and 14,000 hypervisors. And virtual machine is like 120,000. So the biggest Nova, OpenStack Nova cluster has 14,000 hypervisors in one region. This is a main characteristic of the Beluda. So I introduced that we are managing the 14,000 hypervisors to such scale. Um, OpenStack, OpenStack scale technical bottleneck exists. So here is a small table, and the one is like the number of hypervisors. So why is no issue, right? And 10. The number of 10, um, uh, 10 hypervisors is there is also no issue. 100. Something um, bottleneck is hitting. Um, AP server workload or a keystone token management point of view. And 500 and 1,000, over 1,000. So you can see that the OpenStack internal RPC sta stability uh, many trouble with RabbitMQ and MySQL DB performance, instance scheduling performance, and software delivery to all hypervisors. So such kinds of topic uh, we hit as a technical bottleneck. And today's main topic is here. So our PC stability, and we hit many troubles with RabbitMQ. So, this is not only the like a huge scale OpenStack cluster, but today's topic you can listen and learn can be applied to the small cluster as well. So I will share the more details. So here is the figure, the internal communication in OpenStack. So as you know, that OpenStack compo each component is well isolated, so that each communication uses REST API using HTTP, HTTPS. On the other hand, the inside into Nova, so Nova provides the computing services. So inside in Nova, so like Nova API layers and Nova compute layer. So compute layer means uh, please imagine that left side is a Nova API layer, so receiving API request. And the right side is the computing layer. It is like Mm, running on as an agent on each hypervisor. So the once the VM created, so like the, I'd like to create a VM instances. Such case, the APIs component, um, Nova's APIs component will receive the API request, and somehow they need to tell the VM creation in the hypervisor layer. So if, please imagine that, if the hypervisor uses a Riverbird D or KVM, so we need to run the operation like the vert install. So such operation need to tell to the 
compute layer. In such case, uh, in op basic OpenStack uses RPC over RabbitMQ. So RabbitMQ is a kind of a messaging um, services, and the, from the left side, the API layer will send a message into RabbitMQ. This is called as a publisher. And the compute layer is like consuming the messaging in RabbitMQ. This is also called a subscriber. And uh, pick up in the new messages and dispatches the actual messages. So it can be like vert install or launched in instance, something. And finally, the VM is launched in specific hypervisors. So there are the two types of RPC, so remote procedure call uh, using the optional messaging, call and cast. Okay, so left side introduced the call, RPC call. So RPC call is just sending to, from, from the client to the server, um, sending the um, messaging, message. And like uh, server side receive the messages. And finally, uh, RPC server returns the reply queue. And client receive the reply. And finally, the operation has been completed. This is RPC, so the main characteristic is waiting for the reply. And on the other hand, the right side shows the RPC cast. RPC cast is just sending to the message from the client to the server, and there is no nothing, uh, no need to wait, um, no need to get the receive message, reply messages, just sending the RPC message, enough, just enough. So this is the two types of the main um, also messaging RPC. So, uh, as I introduced, the OpenStack, so we are using Beruda, and Beruda is, uh, uses the OpenStack. And of course, we are using RabbitMQ, we were using a RabbitMQ cluster. And here is a two problems. So, problem one is a huge number of queues, publishers, and subscribers makes RabbitMQ heavy workload. So, as we introduced that uh, there are 14,000 hypervisors and uh, many compute uh, API resources, so it's very heavy. And the problem two is uh, like the, once the Labit MQ cluster has been down, so no one can create a VM instances. So then a lot is happening. So the Labit MQ is kind of the single point of failure, SPOF in the OpenStack architecture. So I will explain the common trouble in with RabbitMQ. So message sometimes has lost when checking the OpenStack log. And second is that this is a very um, common issue. So like restarting more than 200 Nova compute at the same time, the disconnection occurred to RabbitMQ. So the, as you know, so I was believing like reboot or restart is a magic operation. So that everything can be solved in a flash. I was believing, but it, de it didn't, it couldn't work. So the mechanism why the disconnection happened. So first of all, send tons of RPC messages by restarting Nova compute. And second, RabbitMQ became high workload because due to all the tons of the messaging is coming. And third, RabbitMQ disconnects existing connections to keep the cluster running. And fourth, resend RPC messages from Nova Compute. And the finally, the loop the step one to step four, so that eternally like uh, sending the tons of messaging and heavy workload, disconnecting, and then sending the bunch of messages, such kind of like that. And they cannot trace RPC messages from RabbitMQ log. And RabbitMQ becomes unstable with unknown reasons. So we don't know why, but sometimes our RabbitMQ becomes unstable. And it is very hard to maintain the RabbitMQ server itself. So however, the, we are managing the huge hypervisor. So somehow we need to overcome this situation. So here is the sweet memories of the RabbitMQ. So first of all, the technical memories. So of course, we just scale up for the RabbitMQ clusters and version up 
the version of the RabbitMQ itself and distributed RabbitMQ cluster for each component. So basically, we are using the one huge RabbitMQ cluster and Nova, Neutron, so another component referred to this cluster. Uh, we just separated each component. So RabbitMQ for Nova, RabbitMQ for Neutron, we distributed each cluster and separated RabbitMQ into data node and management node so, and then finally, the tuning the kernel parameter and watermark. So watermark is kind of like threshold for the memory uh, utilization, uh, sorry, usage. And on the other hand, so operation memories. So we just add the Jenkins job, so automatically restart RabbitMQ cluster easily. And sequential stop start for neutron agent when RabbitMQ for neutron is unstable. So like the agent itself, um, as I explained before, the Nova compute side getting um, unstable after rebooting, but the neutron agent could work. So we just created some automatic automation job for restarting the neutron agent. And third, it could work, but like periodic restart of RabbitMQ cluster for Nova, so every night. So whether it works, it not works, it doesn't matter. So like, let's restart RabbitMQ cluster Nova in the midnight. So it could work, but that there were like never ending chase. So that similar issue had happened after increasing the 500 hypervisors. And finally, we hit limit around 3,000 hypervisors. So yeah, we tried to overcome this situation by tuning or scaling up or something, but like it couldn't. So that it's time to start a new project for large scale Oslo messaging deployment. Yeah, here and after, um, I'd like to explain more detail about the HTTP driver. Yep, uh, thank you, Yoshiro. And then uh, from now on, we started the, our Oslo messaging large scale de driver project. And when we started the project, we, we made two goals for the project. First one is support super large scale open source cluster over 40,000 hypervisors in one region. So we hit the problems at when we have the 4,000 4, hypervisors or 3,000 hypervisors. So at that time, we should make a next goal with 10 times bigger than the current cluster size. So that's why we made this goal as a, a with 40,000. And second goal is, of course, remove SPOF of OpenStack internal communications from RPC point of view. So because of the problems, when one component get down, all VM creation, operation, any operation get down. So we should avoid the situation. And before going to the real HTTP driver architecture, let me quickly introduce how the Oslo messaging driver is implemented and its architecture. Basically, uh, the, sorry, the left box is a client of the RPC and the right side, right box is a server of the RPC. And basically, the Oslo messaging hide the driver protocol using the transport layer for the OpenStack services. So when you write your um, software, you don't need to think about the driver protocol to implement the RPC layer. Then, this, the, in order to do this, the transport layer inside Oslo messaging has a driver architecture to change the under layer protocol for the communications. And then the, we decided to really implement the large scale driver in here not, uh, not updating the OpenStack code or our basic Oslo messaging architecture. That's our concept to create a new project, uh, sorry, new driver. And then the, let's jump into the what the driver and the driver protocol do to realize the RPC. So let, let me explain using the, uh, let me explain it using the core RPC which, you, which have the call and reply message. So in left side, the, it's simple. 
let's say the RP, when RPC client make a call RPC, sends a message to RPC server, and one of the server gets a request. And then the server does some things, and then after that, the server replies a message, uh, sorry, replies a response to RPC client. Okay, then in RabbitMQ case, how it is implemented? First one, the RPC client can recognize topic of RPC server. So let's say in this case, the RP, this three RPC server listen the same topic in the message queue, meaning the pub sub model, and then RPC client pick up, pick up one um, appropriate topic queue for the, for the server, and then clients publish message to topic queue. And second, this is a magic in using a RabbitMQ, driver layer pick up one of RPC server from topic, topic server as a destination. So let's say because of the pub sub model, that no one does it, so let's say the when RP, one of the RPC server, which is a subscriber of the message, receive, uh, no, no, pick up any message, it means that this server is picked by the pub server model for the other, let's say, RPC server target. And the third step is the RPC server dispatch the message to OpenStack service and do some things. And last one, the RPC server return reply to the reply message to the RPC client. That's how the RabbitMQ driver and driver protocol do. And then the next is, this is a also messaging HTTP driver we implemented. So let me uh, explain the each boxes quickly. So the, uh, the purple box, is a RPC client and server. And we introduce the two new components. One is a console. It is a open source console uh, system. And the yellow box is HTTP broadcaster. Let me explain the details of the broadcaster later. So let's ignore it here right now. So the, in order to realize, uh, okay, so how it, let me explain how it works. So first, when the RPC server started, starts. The RPC server do two things. One is the register the server information to console. Uh, sorry, one thing with two items. The register the server information. First, the first information is the also messaging information. Let's say this RPC server recent blah, blah, blah topics in the also messaging layer information. And second, that we use HTTP protocol so that the RPC server endpoint information, let's say host name, the port number of HTTP server, and this, this information. And then when R, then the client make a call to the RPC server, of course, client needs to know where the, each RPC server listen. So that's why the R, when RPC, uh, sorry, RPC client make a call, RPC call, the first RPC client fetch server information from console to get all the, let's say, target RPC server information. And then next RPC client select one of the appropriate server to make a request. And finally, the, of course, RPC client make a call to RPC server directly to the uh, directory. So by, in Introducing this architecture, we have two improvements against to the problems you should have explained. First one is data flow and endpoint information are separated. So that's why the, we don't need to worry about the number of connection to single um, service or system, regardless of the number of hypervisor, which means the RPC number of RPC server. And second is, the second improvement is the direct API call to without SPOF. Of course, as you know, the HTTP protocol is a one-to-one -one, pro, one -one messaging protocol, let's say transport protocol, so that's why that you, that there is no SPOF. As long as server and client works, there is no problem. That's the point. 
Okay, then the, we have two tricks in the HTTP driver to make it work. So first one is the RPC server return known in cast RPC once server receive any messages. Let me explain that it's in the next slide. And the second trick is RPC broadcast. Fan out called in the OpenStack is realized by the HTTP broadcaster processes, which I explained in the yellow box before. Uh, so this is the uh, more details of the HTTP driver server side architecture. So let's say the this blue box, the most outside box, represents a real OpenStack service process. Let's say Nova API, Nova Compute, Neutron Server, and etc. And then the purple box is uh, represents the Oslo messaging, let's say architecture or pro service uh, library part. And we implemented the, this yellow boxes HTTP server. So as, ex, uh, as Yushiro explained, the also messaging has two type of call. First one is call. Uh, sorry, also messaging has two type of RPC. First one is call, which has reply. And second is a uh, cast, which doesn't have a re reply, a response. So actually for implementing a core RPC, it's easy because it's straightforward. HTTP protocol have request and response. So let's say that when the HTTP server receive any res request with core API endpoint, it dispatches any request to the backend server services and then re gets a result of some things and then reply the message to the client. And that for cast side, this is a trick. So in H, you know, the HTTP protocol, it requires the request and response. On the other hand, upper layer protocol, also messaging cast protocol, don't have, doesn't have any response, how it is realized. And then this is a trick. So first, the client sends the RPC cast to the server. And after that, once the cast receive and recognize, hey, the message is incoming to my, myself. And then quickly the cast, uh, server side make a response to the RPC client. So by doing this, the H, uh, sorry, RPC client don't, doesn't need to wait any response from the server side, and then server side can start its work, its task asynchronously without uh, like let's say when any stop operation or wait operations. This is a fast trick. And actually for the client side architecture, it's more simple. It's same the architecture blue box is OpenStack services and then the purple box represent the also messaging library part. And we implemented the yellow box, the client driver and cast and call, sorry, call and cast client and also the fan out. And then the, what the client does is only the first fetch the information from the console server and then make a request, uh, select the destination server and then the HTTP client make a call. That's all. It's really simple. So as a result, let's say the, we can see the, all the OpenStack processes endpoint in the console because all RPC server registers information in console cluster. So as you can see, the, let's say this Nova Conductor or Nova Compute, it's a process name, and then we have a lot of the endpoint in the console. <coughs> Excuse me. And then this is a broad, uh, second trick, uh, the broadcaster. So the broadcaster process amplify uh, all HTTP requests to all target RPC servers. So this, uh, let's say, fan out is a, let's say, special like feature implemented in the Oslo messaging RPC. So when the client make a RPC call, that somehow 
the request goes to all RPC server which listen the same topics. So in order to do that, if you use RabbitMQ, it's easy, right? It's a mess pub sub model. You can easily implement publish our message to uh, messaging service, and then the messaging service like sends a message to everyone, and subscriber receive it. That's all. On the other hand, the HP protocol, which is one-to-one -one mapping the protocol, so that's why the somehow we need to solve this. Uh, we need to realize this feature in the HP driver, and then we introduce the broadcaster process. So the, when you want to make a fan out this broadcasting, the API node make a one RPC call, meaning the HTTP request to the broadcaster process. And then after that, the, the broadcaster reply the RPC quickly to the API node uh, for the client. And then after that, the broadcaster make a same request to all hypervisor, sorry, all the RPC server which listen the same topic. So that's why the client doesn't need to wait the wait finishing the finishing H o over ten thousand HTTP call to all target RPC targets. That's a broadcaster. Uh, the, sorry, the second tricks we implemented. So uh, the, using this the HTTP driver, we have already deployed this HTTP driver in our production cluster and. We have already used it over two years. And actually, that, this is a result. After two years, we applied the HTTP driver to production. So stable, found zero issues in the last two years. So as you should have a, had a memory, sweet memory, that we wake up midnight again, again, and again. But right now, we can sleep. We can drink, we can eat, we can chat, we can make a video game, anything, we can do that. That's the current situation. <laughs> yes, and then the, after we applying the HP driver, we notice the little known fact after stopping RabbitMQ. Actually, we notice that RabbitMQ doesn't lose any messages, basically. So the reason we think the RabbitMQ uh, lose a message is the RPC server left all the host topic queue after even though it's stopping. So the RPC server doesn't, uh, clean, do, doesn't, doesn't do any cleanup for the topic queue for the host. So that's why the host topic queue remain in the RabbitMQ side with a RabbitMQ driver, and then that's why the RPC client can send a message to the client topic queue. And then the, because of the no subscriber of the message, after, let's say, 10 minutes later, or two minutes later, some later, the Nova RPC client detects, hey, there is no reply from the host. So that's why the, let's start the timeout operations. And then from the OpenStack log point of view, there is no subscriber no uh, let's say RPC server subscriber logs, and then but client send a message. Hey, looks like from the RabbitMQ log, it looks like RabbitMQ lost the message. That's why server cannot subscribe any messages, even though the client send a message. But in the reality, it's not true. So in case of HTTP driver, we notice that uh, the in case of HTTP driver, let's say a RPC server stop means there is a no TCP socket in the server side. So that even though the server information remain in the console, the RPC client can detect the RPC server is down and output the reason into the log. So let's say the one time um, race condition is Rabbit server get down, but this down information is uh, sorry, Nova compute RPC server get down, but the down information is not uh, going to the console and then the RPC client fetch the download information from the console, and then the client make a re HTTP request to the server. In that time, at that time, server get down, so that's why there is no socket 
on the server side. Client cannot make a real HTTP uh, connection to the server. Then the client can detect, the, hey, tower is not working right now. Okay, let's change the target host if I can, like that. So that's why the, we notice the issue, RabbitMQ doesn't lose message. Okay, then the lesson learned from the, this stable RPC backend. So one positive thing is no human operation during the, any server maintenance. As you know, the server require any maintenance, memory get failure, disk failure, power failure, something, something, something. At that point, the, we don't need to worry about the SPOF. Even though one server get down, hey, okay, let's change. And then everything works fine, no problem. But actually, I think we are a bit negative person. So the negative side is no rehearsal chance for the real backend down. Let's say, as I said, we have a sweet memory with the RabbitMQ. We can make real practice exercise, rehearsal for the real production cluster down. Hey, OK, we know, we know. Hey, down, it's down. OK, OK, let's restart. That's all. On the other hand, new driver don't get fail. Any times. So that's why I'm sure we always said, hey, we did a great job, but we are really afraid of that situation. We couldn't recover if everything gets down. I'm not sure how, how, it is, how we can re recover it. That's a problem, negative side of the stable RPC backend. Okay, so the, for the HTTP driver FAQ, so the Actually, we have a term, lots of FAQ, but let me explain the spe common FAQ. Uh, FAQ is common things, but anyway, the common three things. The SPOF location is only changed from RabbitMQ into console, right? It's kind of the one of common FAQ, and then the, our answer is no. As long as service discovery is available, this, pro this architecture works fine. Let's say we can replace the console to DNS or something, something. other, any like service discovery things. And second FAQ is, are there any topics you don't talk today? Of course, yes, we can a lot, uh, we have a lot. If, we ha if I have time, I can speak it over three hours or four hours. And then we have lots of topics. <laughs> And third, is HTTP driver superior to RabbitMQ in every aspect? And actually, no. We, make a, we made a, developed the good things, but the, both had the advantage and disadvantage in other different cases. So especially in case of small OpenStack cluster, I think RabbitMQ is much easier for operation point of view. So because uh, since RabbitMQ, dri RabbitMQ driver is a centralized model, meaning like the RabbitMQ is a SPOF or a like single sy centralized system, so that's why you can monitor whole amount of messages and the uh, status of all message backlog and everything. And also the, let's say since it is client server model between RPC client server and RabbitMQ, let's say all the client, uh, RPC client server uh, publisher or uh, subscriber, and then the RPC side try to make a connection to RabbitMQ as a server. So that's why the, you can easily configure IPACL for them if needed. So that's a good point for the using RabbitMQ driver as your backend. So that's why the, I said no for this question. Okay, then this is the last slide. So for this HTTP driver, the, this is upstream contribution progress. So right now the spec of the HTTP driver is already approved in the OpenStack community. And then we started the upstream contribution to the driver and its ongoing. And we try to make it's available in officially in the next OpenStack release to use uh, for everyone to use. Okay, thank you.
And the, actually, we have the five minutes for any Q&A session. So if you have any questions, please raise your hand. Uh, thanks for the presentation. It is interesting. Uh, I have one question. Uh, uh, in OpenStack architecture, the API side uh, uh, orchestrates many uh, hypervisors. So the, do you use a persistent HTTP connection, or uh, do you connect, uh, connect HTTP connection uh, on demand? Uh, the reason I ask, I ask this is if you uh, uh, Orchestrate them, uh, handle the, uh, for example, the 40,000 servers, uh, hypervisors. Uh, uh, if we use persistent connection, uh, it consumes a lot of port num uh, TCP port numbers. Uh, okay, uh, can, I, can I hear me? Okay. okay, so the answer is no, we don't use the persistent connection for the HTTP connections. So we use, uh, not we, uh, HTTP driver make a new single HTTP connections every time for the, all the RPC connections, uh, sorry, RPC request. Uh, uh. Okay. Uh. Yeah, I have one question. So, if I understand if I understand correctly, you replace the message queue with a like direct call model, and in that case, what I'd like to ask you is one question phrased in two ways: uh, What guarantees do you provide for delivery, and do you run into any kind of race conditions or you know something getting called twice from two different places or problems like that? Uh, so the the, the Changes between the RabbitMQ driver and the HP driver for the messaging delivery guarantee, right? Right, yes. Uh, actually, the, actually for, for the guarantee things, the, actually, the, the, as I explained, the little known issues, the, let's say RabbitMQ looks like guarantee its message deliveries, and you know, as you know, as long as make, uh, for HTTP driver, the, as long as you um, make a connection, the message delivery should be like guaranteed somehow. But the problem is the, in the RabbitMQ side, the, let's say, ha, because of the implementation of the Oslo messaging library, sometimes the message looks like lost, but it's not lost it. That was the problem. On the other hand, using the HTTP driver, we can guarantee that the, if message cannot be like, delivered, the client can detect, let's say, the, it means the like client cannot finish to send the, any HTTP request to the server side, or the cannot receive entire response from the server. So that's why the we can, how can I say, the guarantee, the message delivery is sure. Right, and what about the opposite way, where you have two clients, client A and client B, mm -hmm. who try to do something on the same hypervisor, mm -hmm. where they should not be allowed, only one client can mm -hmm. perform the operation, but. I guess I assume that with service discovery, it it is possible for you, for you to have two clients racing for the same hypervisor. And how mm -hmm. do you solve that problem? Uh, actually, uh, it, in my opinion, the, we don't need to worry about from the between the old one and the new one, because in the old one cases, uh, RabbitMQ cases, that there is a one message consumer threat in the RPC server side, so that's why. The consumer thread pick up any message to the server one by one and process everything one by one. And same for the HTTP side. The HTTP re receives a request and, the, and handle everything one by one. So that's why there are, let's say, how can I say, no, no change. For right, right, so condition. you buffer internally on each, 
each hypervisor has its own buffer. Okay, okay, I see. Right. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Uh, anything else? I think we are running out of time. Uh, oh. Okay, maybe last one. Hi, thank you. Um, have you ever considered using some other alternatives like Kafka? Ah, Kafka backend, right? Yes. Ah, yes, of course, we talked the Kafka, using Kafka. But the, for this one, the, actually, Kafka can uh, solve this, the scale problems. And the, our company has, a, I think, the, one of the biggest Kafka cluster in the world in, as a line corp. But the prob uh, the, using Kafka cannot solve the second problem. Kafka is SPOF. The, we have the stable Kafka cluster, but the, uh, if Kafka get down, everything get down. This situation will not change. That's a problem. That's a point. We think that Kafka is one of the alternative, but we didn't select the Kafka as a backend. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I think we can finish, and if you have any other questions, we are happy to answer after the session. Thank you. Yeah.